<laughs> All right. Match two, round three is Canyon Network. Ben and Mike, back to you. Mike will be properly flogged after the show. I'll make sure of it. Thank you. <laughs> we were that close to Polar again, just saying. Yeah, we're, we're getting close. I actually heard the crowd there. Did you hear? There's yeah, a couple it cheers. Seems like There's everybody some Polar wants fans Polar. out there. You know, we might have to start a chant or something. Yeah. We might just have to force them to play Polar at one point. Just, <laughs> just, just to, to see, see how it goes. Just to see how it comes out. Well, Black Watch, they obviously changed something. It, their yeah. strats seemed very similar, but there was a lot more aggression and a lot more focus on that aggression, and it paid off. Yeah. They really flushed Eon Synergy out, and then um, it, they actually forced them back around into an area where their Overwatch was then able to wail on them. I, they tried to good up and get Theta, yeah. and Chrisman's able to just lay down the DPS. It is pretty extreme range, so it's not full damage, but he's still stacking up numbers. Yeah, you can't just ignore him up there, but that I think that was the thing. You gotta wonder, was Eon Synergy expecting, seeing that same push, that same movement that they saw in the first, all three drops of the first round, they see that same aggression, that same movement, and then the stall, right? They move forward, they're charging, they're coming at you, and then they just don't don't push any further. And so you gotta wonder, was Eon thinking, okay, here they come, we're gonna get set up, get ready to receive, and instead they kept going, and they kept being more aggressive and pushing into them, and you know, it's the same strat at the start, but the result is very, very different when you get down to it. And it was looking way different after they caught out that, I believe it was a hunchback, yeah. Caught him in transition because they they didn't just stop. They moved that extra little bit forward, got a firing line on him, and he had to cross an entire open section between mm -hmm. two spires, and he was just getting shredded down. I think he made it out, made it out of there at like 60% or less. And I think that goes back to what we saw in round one, right? When we did that in round one, uh, 228 was aggressive, but they weren't punishing Eon for staying in place. They weren't punishing Eon for just sitting there and waiting for them to come into him. Because 228 was basically, they'd move up, they'd sit there, and then Eon could just spread around them and take them down. In this case, Blackwatch moves up, they get into position, Eon stays there, because why shouldn't they? They're getting the damage in, that's what they did the last you know, three times that they played, but then 228 keeps coming, and they're not ready for that. you got to wonder now, is Eon going to sit back and say, well, we've got to make sure that we can react to that better. Now that we've seen that coming, it's still a long way from being over in this round. It's only the first drop. Absolutely. And if there's any map that could potentially have a lot of aggression on it, Canyon Network, because of just the low canyons you can move in and the shorter distance that you have to travel, if you get a jump on someone, if they don't scout you out, there's a very good possibility you could get the jump on them. Now, we saw aggression from them in the first round sending that executioner down and through. So they did watch out for that. Where else are they going to go? They got another yeah. side of the map they could push around. We'll have to see how it goes. Yeah, well, why don't we check it out? Let's do it. Drop two, Blackwatch up, 1-0 on the series. We're heading into Canyon Network. Here we go. Back to Canyon Network. I, everybody's going to just have At to... least this time we're on the opposite, right? We started with Tourmaline, now we're going to Canyon. So it's a little, it's a little bit different, but I would have liked Polar. I think everyone's like just going to gonna need to print out Canyon and Tourmaline posters and hang them up in their room now because <laughs> we've visited here so often, need souvenirs. Official PGI uh, merchandise selling Canyon and Tourmaline posters. All right, here we go. All the mechs are getting powered up. We are over on the 228 side. Looks like we've got ourselves Huntsman with streaks. Six SRM6, that is quite a bit of streaks. That is gonna make somebody hurt. Got a heavy right to left movement and they did uh, get some early scratch in on Torok, just light scratch. But here we go, we've got Executioner, Supernova, Summoner, a lot of these familiar mechs. Chrisman up in the backfield. It looks like they want to make a move. We got Da Red scouting in his Wolfhound, sitting up right up on the border of the map, just trying to watch for people. And it looks like he might have gotten a spot in. That early information is going to be key because we're going to see their entire team mobilizing to receive. 
This feels very familiar right now, doesn't it? It does, but Colonel O'Neill taking 11% damage right out of the gate without any return fire. That is a bad trade and a really good start for Blackwatch. They do have some of their own Overwatch in the back with Prisman in that night gear, but main body moving up, getting closer and closer. And luckily and it's for Colonel O'Neill, that was mostly arm damage on that hunchback, so he's still in pretty good shape. Defunct does take an airstrike as he's moving through, and it looks like Eon definitely knows they're there because they are pulling out and joining the rest yeah, of their team. Yeah, they are in full retreat right now. Panic button continuing on through, down to 90%. He's gonna drop down and will be generally out of the line of sight of most of these mechs, but 84%, he did take a lot of hits on the way, but there's some streaks into Hardox, 76% in that Wolfhound, and panic button has moved up. 208's gotta be careful. This is not really a sustainable move to just keep chasing them around the map. They're taking damage while they're doing this. Absolutely, uh, and I'm sure Eon Synergy would love to just let them continue to chase them, but it looks like they're setting themselves up back against the back wall. They want to start trading, and we're seeing a lot of strikes going back and forth because these guys are just trying to peg each other. Hardock in that Wolfhound having a pretty bad time. He's continuously getting hit by random streaks and laser fire. Panic button on the outside, 76%. Yeah, just took a big strike around the corner. I don't really like this Executioner on this map if you're going to have to try and trade. The weapons are too low mounted. I mean, they're aggressive, but Eon's responding properly. They're, they're avoiding getting into that close fight. Blackwatch has map control, but they have opted to cap no points. So they have zero tickets currently. They really seem to want to end this one, but Da Red getting up close actually, to that Huntsman Eon and he gets a burn rotating, on rotating uh, a little bit away from that back wall back towards Sigma. Looks like they want to try and get an angle on Panic Button. They're working it, but he is smartly moving away. I don't know if he's moving away fast enough, though. Ed gets a spot on Zelloglock, though, so he's going to be able to give that information. And Blackwatch is getting tucked up in the corner here. This is interesting, because Eon Synergy is kind of working their sel themselves into a choke point. If they're not able to start capitalizing, nice airstrike right across Defunct. He drops down and 60%. Panic Button's taking a lot of damage. Still trying to get out of the fight. He backed up straight away. Didn't get behind cover. At this point, 2-2-H has got to be thinking about map control. They've got five, you know, four-fifths of the map under their control, or at least, uh, you know, have Eon Synergy backed up into a corner, but they, they haven't really taken advantage of it. They really do have Eon right where they want them, but they don't seem to be capitalizing on it. The, in terms of the damage output here, it's looking very good for Eon. They're landing a lot of really solid shots, and there's just no response, really, from Blackwatch. Panic tries to trade, but this is not a good mech to trade from. I mean, they finally picked up some cap points here, but that's that's a really long time to go without capping, especially when you have the advantage. That just means if they want to go to the cap strategy, they have to drag it out for even longer. Yeah, they have an entire 725 more tickets to go here. Yeah. Panic and trying to pull out, and he might be able to get away, but I think he's being ghosted by the Wolfhounds, and they're going to flip. Yeah, the easily Wolfhounds are going to flip Epsilon, Epsilon back. Easily. So Blackwatch is gonna have to figure something out. They were not winning on the trades. They're continuously getting striked out. Prisman is trying to do as much work as possible, but they're starting to lose map control simply because they need to be more careful and not lose mechs. And we're gonna see it start leveraging back in the other direction here. And maybe that's what they want. Maybe they want to get them to move up so they can jump on them again, but... They've taken a lot of damage if that's their intention. Yeah, that's something you want to do early game, but late game, everybody's just hanging on by a thread, very weak. Looks like Queen Blade is picking up the Kappa advantage here. And so they have the three cap now, but again, it took a long time. They probably could have been running that three cap for a couple minutes now to start this game. Oh, uh, looks like that Huntsman got a little bit stuck on the bridge, but he dislodged himself 62% on that Huntsman. The longer Eon waits, though, Yes, they are burning them down. They have a decent amount of time, but they have to be careful not to wait too long because they are still at a cap disadvantage here. And if things start going sour where they're not able to start capitalizing on some of these uh, attacks, they, it could, they at, could let uh, it slip away. Zelloglock right now, actually out in the open, right on Theta. He's trading with Chrisman, getting some damage in, but Zelloglock is in a dangerous position. 
Grisman's actually doing all right. right here. His armor's pretty weak, but he has, he has nothing open yet in that night gear. And Zelaglock finally drops down out of the fight, but that was not a good engagement by him. One last bite right up in the face of Dot Red. He's dropping some streaks in, but he's about to get jumped. There's three mechs right there, and he's all alone. I think he's lost his leg. He's got no help from anybody, and he gets taken down. Huntsman, the streak Huntsman is down, and, and it looks big. like Eon Synergy wants to use that momentum and take that right into Panic Button and crew. They're going to keep going. We'll have to see if they can respond. We have uh, Ed in that mislinks getting right up in the face of Chico in the Warhawk, but he's at 73%, yeah, still doing fairly an well. And Colonel O'Neill now coming up and getting extreme angles on everybody that's behind Theta. He's going to be able to do some significant work and allow the rest of Eon Synergy to move up just because he's taking that position. If Panic can whip around and take him out, though, that'll be a big win. Ed is still playing extremely close to Chico in that Warhawk. They are right on the opposite side of the rock from each other. Yeah, we'll take a look at what Panic's doing right now, but he is really hurt. Potentially going to try and jump around the corner if he can. He's actually only down to, he's down to one heavy large laser. He's basically out of the fight at this point. Well, a living mech is still certainly a threat as long as it has a weapon, so keeping that mech alive would be very good, but he's definitely very close to all these enemies right now. Zelglock right on top of him, and he is able to score the kill. Torok able to get some damage in on Zelglock, but it was a two against one hit there, and he's dropped down to 50%. And the cap advantage is about to slip away as they lose Kappa. Looks like we got a light fight. Queenblade versus Lizzie in the Marauder 2C. Lizzie at 55%. These mechs are extremely hard to kill. No armor open, so it's going to be very difficult to get crits, but they are starting to open them up. Two sets of machine gun mislinks working on him right now. And a machine gun and summoner. And a machine gun in. summoner in there. 33%, and they're all running into each other. 32%, it's still alive. Center torso wide open on Lizzie. Dot Grisman Red takes out Grisman in the big. meantime, though, but they are take, able to take him down. It was a pretty costly a, attempt, though, yeah, because they are losing mechs costly. in the backfield. So far, four dead for Black Watch, and the caps are set back to even. Ed able to take out the Hunchback 2C in that Miss Lynx. These Miss Lynxes still have a lot of fight left in them, as long as they can keep yeah, from getting Yeah, they need to be careful. They've got to stay alive here. And they are surrounded. The downside of engaging that Marauder 2C is that they got pulled down into the canyon, and now they really can't get out. They are completely surrounded. Archon Adam Steiner and Queen Blade about to get rolled up on. And they get taken out. Last one remaining is Ed in the Mistlings against six mechs. They're all extremely hurt, but he is not looking too hot himself. Yeah, that he, would be one extra well, comeback. As long as he doesn't get shot in the back or... He might have a little bit of fight, but they don't have a lot of time. They're not going to win on a cap game with two Wolfhounds still in the game. Yeah, unfortunately for Ed, he lost one of his arms, so he's down four machine guns right now. He's only basically got half of his firepower. Oh, Does he scores a kill on Dot Red. Red, pops him in the back. Zelaglock knows where Ed is, but Ed doesn't necessarily know where Zelaglock is, and he's going to double back. Not a lot of time, especially with a four cap. It's going to take a miracle for Ed to be able to pull this one off. 200 tickets remaining, four cap in favor of Eon Synergy. And I think Ed is just going to futilely try and cap something or not. Yeah, if he tries to cap, I don't think he's going to have enough time. To, he can't counter cap with that many mechs on the field. He has to get kills, but he's... Uh, that tells me that this one is going to be going in favor of Eon Synergy. 150 tickets remaining, but the four cap, soon to be five cap, in favor of Eon Synergy. Uh, it's going to be over pretty quick. So Ed just kind of patrolling, looking for any kills he can find, but it's not going to lead to a win. So good attempt by Blackwatch, but just seemed to, to kind of stagnate, especially after backing Eon Synergy into the corner and then yeah. not capitalizing on it. I think the difficulty they had is they backed Eon Synergy into a corner, but at the same time, you know, they had taken so much damage. We do have one last little fight here.
Looks like he's uh, pretty hurt. If he can get through that front armor, he might be able to pull it off. And that Hardock is coming in that Wolfhound. He's going to help. 722, is he even going to be able to take care of business before it's over? 20 tickets remaining. Starting to split up who he's shooting at. Getting some damage here, too. And, and he it goes. Right at Right at the end. So, 8-3 to three in favor of Eon Synergy, and we are all tied up at 1-1 one, one on the series. There we go. I think that was a, a much different performance in terms of how Eon reacted to the aggression of 228 there. I agree. And, I mean, I, we saw Eon back up, kind of get cornered almost intentionally, and then instead of Blackwatch capitalizing on that, they just started trading with them. Yeah. And they weren't worrying about the caps and didn't really trade that well. I mean, they, their percents were just falling. They were tanking compared to Eon, who was just playing extremely tight yeah. to their cover. And every time they'd peek, they'd deal damage and wouldn't necessarily return, like, get return damage. And their strikes were really on point. Yeah, and I think the difference, like we said, what we saw there was that 2 to 8 remained aggressive like they were in the last match. But this time, Eon didn't fall for the trick, so to speak, of their first round. Their first round, 2 to 8 was aggressive. They pushed forward, and they stopped. And then in this last round we saw in the previous drop, 2 to 8 was aggressive. They pushed forward, and they kept pushing forward. Eon wasn't ready. This time, they were ready. Absolutely. Let's go back to Darren to get our next map.